fact that we are all here shows that we are committed to the struggle of ending violence against women. A struggle which, thanks to our foremothers who fought these battles before us, has come a long way but is nowhere near the end. Whenever I have discussions with people about this subject, they feel the need to bring to my attention that we have it significantly better in Canada and we should stop complaining and be thankful for the rights and freedoms we have. Activists hear this all the time. And perhaps the people who say this are right in some ways. After all, in some parts of the world, women are denied rights and freedoms that are automatically given to men and are forced to view men as authority figures, superiors. <coughs> and in most cases will experience sexual violence in the form of harassment and assault, which may or may not include rape, not only from their male partner, but from men in the community, and it will be tolerated by the community, and the victim will be blamed for it. Shame! Shame! Shame. But let me ask you this. First of all, why are we always criticizing other countries when Canada has its problems too? In Canada, a country that is normally held in high regard on an international scale as well as by its citizens, a country that takes pride in calling itself free and claims to value diversity, peace, and equality, one in three women will be sexually assaulted at some point in her lifetime. That means that, that means that you all know a woman in your life. Your mother, your sister, your aunt, your grandmother, daughter, or a female friend who will probably experience, who probably has experienced it or will experience it at some point in their lives. Sexist jokes about women are considered normal and funny. And we all know that sexual harassment happens far, it's, it's far too common. 13% of women have been sexually assaulted while drunk or high because someone felt that it was, it was acceptable to take advantage of her impaired judgment and inability to give proper consent. Over 90% of sexual assaults occur by someone who is known by the victim, whether it is a friend, a partner, acquaintance, relative. And guess what? Only 6 out of every 100 incidents are reported to the police, because even the police, who are supposedly here to serve and protect, <coughs> usually blame the victim. Shame. There's a police officer in Toronto who made a statement a couple years ago saying, if women didn't dress like sluts, they wouldn't get raped. Shame. Now, these statistics are all recent Canadian statistics, and that appalling statement was made by a Canadian police officer. We just love to point fingers at other countries and to make ourselves feel better about the problems we have here, but this is happening in Canada, folks. Now stop whining to me about how we're all equal and how women have it so great here, because we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Another thing, why is it exactly that we have it better in Canada than in other parts of the world? It didn't just happen all of a sudden out of nowhere, and it didn't happen because a good politician decided that women were human beings. It happened because women who had realized the extent of their oppression came together and started organizing. They started demanding their rights. Activism. Activism is a crucial part of this struggle, like all struggles. As activists, we make it a priority to inform ourselves about what is wrong in our society, such as poverty, homelessness, hate crimes, corrupt politicians, and oppression issues, to name just a few. We know that is issues of gender and sexuality are intrinsically tied to race, class, disability status, age, and so on. Not only do we educate ourselves on these issues, but we try to educate others and live by the principles we speak of. Women and men alike often talk about feminism female-identified and male-identified folks being equal. And I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge my cis privilege here and, and apologize if I appear to be leaving out those who identify with neither male or female. Um, gender is complicated, and, and just please be aware that you are just as important to the struggle as, as people who identify with either side of the gender binary. I love the activist community because we, because we all know that a lot of work needs to be done in Canada, and more importantly, it isn't just women working towards women's empowerment. There are a lot of good men out there who recognize the power and privilege that they hold simply for having been born male. Men don't have to fear walking home alone late at night, at least not for the same reasons. Men can wear whatever they want, and they don't have to worry about being catcalled, and they're not accused of wanting attention from the opposite sex. 
Now, there are exceptions to every rule, and it is true that one in seven boys will be sexually assaulted before reaching the age of 18. But in most cases, they don't have to worry about inappropriate staring, unwanted touching, sexual harassment and assault. And in a situation where he does have an unpleasant encounter with someone, the police never ask, what were you wearing? Or how much did you have to drink? In order to determine the severity of the incident and whether or not the perpetrator will be held accountable. And guess what? Being a male activist does not exclude you from these privileges. It also doesn't mean that you're not guilty of being sexist or being the perpetrator of sexual violence against women as well as other men. The problems we see and criticize happen just as much in activist communities as they do outside them. We've all seen men act out of their own social conditioning that they claim to challenge. They do this by being dominant and aggressive towards others, belittling, patronizing, and silencing female voices, and reacting defensively when we try to make them aware of their own misogynistic behavior. We've all, we've all known men who call themselves feminists and claim to respect women, yet when women feel disrespected by them, they turn it around and make themselves victims. They are quick to criticize the societal expectations of men and typical male traits such as dominance and aggressiveness, yet they fail to understand how they themselves have manifested these traits. Brothers, you need to understand that when your sisters criticize you, it is done out of love. We tell you what you're doing wrong because we want you to stand in solidarity with us on our journey for liberation. But you cannot be part of this if you stand in our way. It's society that did this to you, and it's society that continues to oppress all of us. But calling yourself a feminist or an activist does not make it all disappear. Activism cannot help you unless you're willing to help yourself. And we need you. We really need you. As your sisters, we want you to be part of this with us because you're a very important part of ending violence against us since it is mainly your gender causing this violence. We need you to stand up against patriarchy, sexism, and misogyny and not only be critical of others' behavior but understand how you can be part of the problem and allow yourself to heal. That is the first step and this cannot move forward until that first step is completed. You can either listen to us and take our advice or you can brush it off and continue with your oppressive behavior. It is your choice, but let me tell you, if you choose the latter, you are contributing to the oppression, degradation, and violence against women everywhere. You are contributing to the sexual harassment, assault, and rape of women in your community. You are not eradicating patriarchy, but you are the face of patriarchy. And if you're standing here thinking I'm being unreasonable and aggressive for saying these things rather than valuing what I have to say, you're unbelievably hypocritical for even being here right now. Sisters, we're also guilty of oppressive behavior at times. We too forget that we are privileged in various ways, whether it be white privilege, heterosexual privilege, cisgender privilege. I could go on and on about how our society is built on privilege and oppression. In some cases, we're just not treating each other well. I think one of the main reasons for that is because we're constantly being pressured to fit society's mold of what we should look, feel, and act like. We're taught to compete with one another for attention, mainly from males. They try to teach us how to be beautiful, and they teach us not only to shame one another, but to feel ashamed of our own bodies and our sexualities. We've all heard women call other women sluts and whores as insults. We've all heard people insult our gender by saying things like, women are catty bitches. And a lot of the time, it is women who are saying this. Again, being an activist does not make a person immune to criticism. Just like men, we also manifest behaviors within ourselves that we would criticize in others. If we do not come to terms with this, just like we're urging our men to, we will never truly stand in solidarity with each other. The most important thing we need, we, we need to do, aside from understanding our privilege, is to love, empower, and learn from one another. If we're going to take back the streets, we need to do it together. And that is exactly what we're here to do, am I right? Yeah. This is a call out to all human beings here right now. This is Take Back the Night. We are here because women shouldn't have to live in fear. We are here because women should be able to walk the streets freely and safely without experiencing sexual violence, or any kind of violence for that matter, in any form. We are here because we want to end the oppression of women so that one day we'll be able to end oppression in all forms and humans can live together in harmony. Let us occupy patriarchy, 
smash sexual violence, and maybe the state while we're at it, and take back our communities. We need to stop talking about revolution and make the revolution happen here and now. And we will do just that. Thank you. Hi, everyone. As Trini said, this is a piece by Eve Ensler, uh, written in the past year, actually, and it's called Over It. Ready? Yep. I am over rape. I am over rape culture, rape mentality, rape pages on Facebook. I am over the thousands of people who signed those pages with their real names without shame. I am over people demanding their right to rape pages and calling it freedom of speech or justifying it as a joke. I am over people not understanding that rape is not a joke, and I'm being over told that I don't have a sense of humor, and women don't have a sense of humor, when, when most women I know, and I know a lot, are really, really funny. <laughs> We just don't think that uninvited penises up our anus or our vagina is a laugh riot. I am over how long it seems to take anyone to ever respond to rape. And I am over Facebook taking weeks to take down rape pages. I am over the hundreds of thousands of women in the Congo still waiting for the rapes to end and the rapists to be held accountable. I am over the thousands of women in Bosnia, Burma, Pakistan, South Africa, Guatemala, Sierra Leone, Haiti, Afghanistan, Libya, you name a place, still waiting for justice. I am over rape happening in broad daylight. And I am over the 207 clinics in Ecuador supported by their government that are capturing, raping, and torturing lesbians to make them straight. I am over one in three women in the U.S. military, happy Veterans Day, getting raped by their so-called comrades. I am over the forces that deny women who have been raped the right to have an abortion. I am over the fact that after four women came forward with allegations that Herman Cain groped them and grabbed them and humiliated them, he is still running for the President of the United States. Yay. And I am over CNBC debate host Maria Bartiromo getting booed when she asked him about it. She was booed, not Herman Cain. Yay. Which reminds me, I am so over the students at Penn State who protested the justice system instead of the alleged <coughs> rapist pedophile of at least eight boys or his boss Joe Paterno who did nothing to protect those children after knowing what was happening to them. Yay. I am over rape victims becoming re-raped when they go public. Yay. I am over starving Somalian women being raped at the Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya, and I am over women getting raped at Occupy Wall Street and being quiet about it because they were protecting a movement which is fighting to end the pillaging and raping of the economy and the earth, as if the rape of their bodies was something separate. Yay. Yay. I am over women still being silent about rape because they are made to believe it's their fault or they did something to make it happen. I am over violence against women not being a number one international priority when one out of three women will be raped or beaten in her lifetime. The destruction and muting and undermining of women is the destruction of life itself. No women, no future, duh. I'm over this rape culture where the privileged with political and physical and economic right take what and who they want, when they want it, as much as they want, any time they want it. I am so over the endless res resurrection of the careers of rapists and sexual exploiters, film directors, world leaders, corporate executives, movie stars, athletes, while the lives of the women they violated are permanently destroyed, often forcing them to live in social and emotional exile. Yay. I am over the passivity of good men. Where the hell are you? 
You live with us, make love with us, father us, befriend us, brother us, get nurtured and mothered and eternally supported by us. So why aren't you standing with us? Why aren't you driven to the point of madness and action by the rape and humiliation of us? I am over years and years of being over rape. And thinking about rape every day of my life since I was five years old. And getting sick from rape and depressed from rape and enraged by rape and reading my insanely crowded inbox of rape horror stories every hour of every single day. I'm over being polite about rape. It's been too long now. We have been too understanding. We need to occupy rape in every school, park, radio, TV station, household, office, factory, refugee camp, military base, back room, nightclub, alleyway, courtroom, UN office. We need people to truly try and imagine once and for all what it feels like to have your body invaded, your mind splintered, your soul shattered. We need to let our rage and our compassion connect us so we can change the paradigm of global rape. There are approximately one billion women on the planet who have been violated. One billion women. The time is now. Prepare for the escalation. Today it begins. Moving toward February 14th, 2013, when one billion women will rise to end rape. Because we are over it! <laughs> Alita Juice Oasis, she is an awesome female rapper, as well as an amazing community activist. Led by Grandmother Moon! I'm asking you queers, sisters, and brothers, how do you treat yourself and each other? What pulls you towards what you love? You need to know where it is you are coming from, to know who you are and where you're going, to let yourself be deeply drawn to the glowing. Are you speaking and acting authentically? What is your being if not peacefully? Like up bodies, release some moans, rid yourself of boxes, leaving only bones, returning to the earth, this much is known. My body cannot be owned. We are the ones. This is the time. The love you have stuns. Let your inner fire shine through pitch black night as fierce as the now. Take your fist and raise it proud. Because all your life you've been fighting this fight. It's what rapists call nature and survivors strife. Who's left and who's right? Who's land? We've lost sight. We're taking back our bodies. Taking back our right. Led by grand. Grandmother Moon! Take back the night! Land rights extend a body autonomy. I'm anti-exploitation pro-first nation sovereignty. Reclaim your voice, your presence is relevant. Root yourself, but acknowledge your settlement. All cities are what remains a fur trade day dynamics. Not much has changed. It's yeah. still our lives at stake. Indigenous sisters missing with no action by the state. It's still lower wages we make, but a new world is ours to create. So Lift your voice to the sky. Let your kind heart and spirit fly. We are the ones. This is the time. The love you have stuns. Let your inner fire shine through pitch black night as fierce as the now. Take your fist and raise it proud. Because all your life you've been fighting this fight. It's what rapists call nature and survivors strife. Who's left and who's right? Who's land? We've lost sight. We're taking back our bodies. Taking back our right. Led by Grandmother Moon. Take back the night. Led by Grandmother Moon. Take back the night. Led by Grandmother Moon. Take back the night. All right. Here's how we're taking back the night tonight, especially. We're going to go on the route from Richmond and Central. We're going to go down the road to uh, Wellington and Central. <laughs> and then we're going to head up the road to Dundas and Wellington. And then we're going to come across to Richmond and Dundas and come back here to Victoria Park. Please note there are safety sisters. They're wearing these amazingly 
bright orange and fluorescent yellow vests. They're the new things in style. Um, so they will be marching on the sides and they're there to keep you um, from running into cars or from the cars from running into you, however that works. Um, please take heed to what they're telling you. Two more things. I know everyone's really excited and getting a little bit rowdy now. Male-identified allies are welcome to join the men's group. Our wonderful ally Ben is over there. He's waving his hands. They're going to be at Wellington and Dundas cheering us on and standing in solidarity. So, folks, if you want to join them, please do so. Women, past, present, future are welcome to join us in the march. Um, there is also, I know, a contingent of folks, of uh, indigenous women and women of color somewhere over there. Um, if you identify like that, please feel free to join those folks over there. Um, 